Hello friends, Osiris here in the 7 star terror raid event for Swampert and a brand new mass outbreak event on now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details as well as the best builds to take down Swampert in your games. So this is the second time out for the 7 star terror raid event for Swampert. It will be running over this weekend as of recording this video from the 7th of June until the 9th. You've got this weekend to take advantage of it. It will be level 100. It will have its hidden ability damp and the moves it will have are going to be Earthquake, Hydro Pump, Sludge Wave, Liquidation with additional moves of Muddy Water and Yawn. It will have the Mightiest Mark. It can never be shiny and it will be the Poison Terror Typing. We'll have in a relaxed nature as well and can only be caught once per save file. And every time you beat the Swampert, you're going to get an array of high cost items, including large and XL candies, poison terror shots, TMs, ability patches, and most notably, you're going to have a 3% chance of any one of the five different Herba Mysticas dropping in this raid. So you'll have the sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and spicy Herba Mysticas potentially dropping. So it's a really good raid to go through and farm this weekend. Alongside the Swampert for its second time out, you're going to see the return of the Blissey 5-star Terror Raid events. These are going to be decent events for Terror Shards in general, as well as XL and Large Candies. So they're just running alongside this event for this weekend. But as I say, it will be running from the 7th of June until the 9th. If it runs past the 9th of June, you can keep this event in your game by just not connecting to the internet. Also, as a bonus this week, we do have a brand new mass outbreak event running, and it will be featuring Finizin, Lotad, and Horsey, respectively. In Paldea, you're going to get Finizin. In Kitakami, you're going to get outbreaks of Lotad. And in the Indigo Disc, in the Terrarium, you're going to get more outbreaks of Horsey. All these events will be running from Thursday the 7th of June from midnight UTC and running through to 23.59 on the 9th of June. So again, running for about the same time as the 7 star terror raid event for Swampert. But these mass outbreak events for these specific Pokemon will have increased chances of getting these Pokemon with the kindly mark. So, of course, the big challenge this weekend is going to be trying to get a shiny one of these three Pokemon with that kindly mark. Pretty hard task to do, but definitely something worth getting while this event is running in your games. So to access this event in your game, you would need to come onto your menu screen and then into Poké Portal. Make sure you are connected to the Internet and then come down to Mystery Gifts and then into the option with Check Poké Portal News. This will just connect you to the internet and update all your raid dens on your map. Primarily, the 7 star terror raid for Swampert will be featuring only in Paldea, whereas the mass outbreaks will feature across all three mats in the Indigo Disc in the Blueberry Academy, in Kitakami and in Paldea. Now we've got three builds that we're going to feature in today's video. They'll all be down in the description below. The first one is going to be From the Ashes, Annihilate, the fighting and ghost type. It will have the ghost terror typing with it. It will have the held item of the shell bell, level 100, and of course, hyper train, making sure all of those IVs are 31 across the board. Now the moveset is very straightforward. You're only going to need two moves in this raid for this Pokemon. It's going to be Bulk Up and Rage Fist. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in attack, 252 EVs in special defense, and the remaining six EVs put into HP with an adamant nature. The ability that we're using on the Annihilate is going to be Vital Spirit because the Swampert does have Yawn, and if you do get hit by it, then you're not going to be affected by that attack. Next up is the Vaporeon. Vaporeon is something that we featured in a preview article for this specific raid. There are some tweaks to this one, but not very many. Level 100, of course, hyper trained. It will have the Psychic Terror Typing with the held item of the Shell Bell. It will have the moves Acid Armor, Calm Mind, and Stored Power. You're not going to need anything other than that in the raid. And the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack and 252 EVs in Defense with the remaining EVs put into HP and the ability Water Absorb. That just gives you complete immunity against any water type attacks throughout the raid. And of course, we do have the Slowbro as well that we featured on our video last week when the event went live. Still a very good option going into this raid. I will link this video with the entire process of how you go into the raid and beat the Swampert with the Slowbro in the description below if you'd like to see it and in the top right hand corner now if you want to use Slowbro in this Swampert raid. It will be a Psychic Terror Typing. It will have the item the Cover Clock, level 100 of course, 
with the moveset Slack Off, Amnesia, Nasty Plot, and Stored Power. The ability doesn't really matter on the slow brawl, but the EV spread is 252 EVs in HP and in defense with a modest nature and the remaining EVs put into that special attack. So they are the three Pokemon I would recommend taking into this raid this weekend. If you want to farm for Herbamistica, probably the fastest one is going to be the Annihilate, followed by Vaporeon and then very closely between Vaporeon and that slow bro all very good consistent ways to get them all available to be caught in the base games we're not going over any legendaries in this so it makes it accessible for everyone and we'll jump into the raid now to show you how easy it is to take down with firstly the annihilate and then we'll cover the vaporeon so when you first come into the raid against the swamper on turn zero it is going to fire off a muddy water that will be hitting all targets and it does have the chance to lower the accuracy on all targets that it connects with it's not going to do too much damage though so it's not something we have to worry about at this stage the big thing that we want to do on turn one is make sure that we always get off a bulk up so bulk up going to boost our attack and our defense by one stage just going to make sure that we are hitting a little bit harder and we're able to soak up those attacks coming out from the swamp herd a lot better like this earthquake and you can see here how well we do take that the next turn what we're going to do is lock in with our rage fist and the beauty about rage fist is it will increase its base power by 50 points every time we do take an attack from the swamp herd so we'll incrementally get stronger throughout the raid and this stage we're just chasing our terrestrialization and to the point where the swamp herd is gonna steal our terror or power very early on in the raid as you can see here and then the next stage is going to be it setting up the shield and then nullifying all stat boosts on our side of the field as well as our ability but all we want to do at this stage until we see that shield and those stat boosts nullified is just lock in with this rage fist it's going to keep us pretty healthy at this stage you can see we're taking decent damage from the earthquake but we're recovering that off with the shell bell held item and at the same time we are just chipping down with our terrestrialization clock until we can get that terrestrialization active on the field where we can do a lot more damage now if you've got partnering pokemon that have status moves like we've got the umbrian here with that thunder wave it is going to help you out you're going to get free turns it's not always going to be the case sometimes you will have a harder time than others but sometimes the rng can be pretty kind to you, you do see the shield set up there it hasn't nullified our stat boosts it is right now it's nullifying our stat boosts and abilities on our side of the field so after this turn we are going to be going for another bulk up and that's all we're generally going to need because we're going to be at the point now where we are going to be able to terrestrialize you can see without that bulk up we're taking a lot more damage from the earthquake um but what we're going to do first off is just lock in with that bulk up going to boost our attack and our defense by one stage again just allowing us to take these attacks a lot better from the swamp herd going forward in the raid and you can see even if you want you can go for another bulk up here just to make sure that you are doing more damage going forward you can essentially lock in with one bulk up two bulk up three bulk up it just depends how much damage you want to do you can go all the way up to six your raid timer is not going to be any trouble at this stage but you don't necessarily need to do too many bulk ups we'll go for three and it should just speed up the raid for us a lot better but annihilate something that everyone has in their games by now especially if you've been doing raid events throughout scholar and valid series and now once we've got those three bulk ups under our belt we can go for that terrestrialization we can lock in with that rage fist raid timer in a very healthy position now like I say, you can go for just one bulk up at the start, then terrestrialize, and then just force your way through the raid with the Rage Fist, and it will be just as effective and just as fast. This just speeds things up for you slightly because you'll be doing a bit more damage with this plus three attack than you had before. You'll be taking less damage from the Earthquakes as well, which is always nice. You can see here we're doing pretty decent damage now to the Swamper, and it's going to be pretty quick to run through the raid with the Annihilate. So you can see it does remove the stat drops on its side of the field but that's not any concern to ours and even a hydro pump coming out we take that pretty comfortably from that swamp herd here's the yawn and even if it does hit you it's one of the four pokemon opposite the, the swamp herd that it targets into if it hits you then don't worry about it because you have that vital spirit you can't be put asleep all we're doing at this stage is locking in with the rage fist until the end of this raid and it's going to be easy street really you're not going to be in any danger of getting knocked out and this next rage fist should be enough to break the shield and then one more after that should be enough to take down the swamper with the shield broken so you can see here that one is breaking the shield maybe two more 
will be needed to get rid of the swamp hurt but like i say this is a very very quick way to get through the swamp hurt very consistent the one to farm the herba mystica this weekend the annihilate is a great choice i would even say it's probably above the vaporeon and also the slow bro that we featured last week just because of the speed of it and the consistency and you're basically you can't go wrong with this because we've got two move options you just need to get the bulk ups right at the right time one at the start of the battle one after it nullifies your stat drops and abilities and then you can go for more if you like at that stage if you're healthy enough and then the rest of the battle you can see we're just locking in with rage fist and it's a very straightforward process great time in a very good position it's a very quick consistent way to run through this one pert and you're going to have a good time if you're doing this solo and your game to farm herba mysticas while this event is running or for however long you keep the swamp in your game so it's as easy as that with the annihilate we'll see what we get for item drops here i haven't had more than two herba mysticas as of yet so it'd be nice if we got more just the one this time but hopefully if you're doing it you'll get a lot more luck than i have and of course, if you want to spawn more of these seven star raid dens on your map after you've defeated it, come to your map, then hit your home menu, then down into system settings and into system, then down into date and time. Make sure your synchronized clock for the internet is off. Click into your date and time options, just toggle through, then hit your home menu, come back into the game and you'll see all the dens will respawn and you'll be able to locate the seven star terror raid event wherever it is on your map. And then you'll be able to head over to it and farm away for those precious herba mysticas over this weekend and if you're using the vaporeon as your raid partner over this weekend to come in against the swamp bird we'll go through the steps now to show you how easy it can be to take this pokemon down turn zero once again you're going to see the swamp bird go for a muddy water but this time it's not really going to affect us because of our water absorbability giving us complete immunity to any water type attacks so not affected by that one turn one we are going to straight away lock in with a acid armor now if you've got an arbolivia as your partner it is going to really help you in this raid because it's going to weaken the power of those earthquakes coming out from the swamp herd in particular as well if you see something like an intimidator like we've got with the taurus here it is going to weaken the power of those earthquakes as well so we'll opt for the more optimal attack which will be that sludge wave turn two we're going to lock in with a calm mind that's going to boost our special defense and special attack by one stage meaning that we can take the sludge waves a lot better and we're going to be doing a lot more damage with our stored powers as well stored power one of those attacks that is based on the incremental boosts that you've got to your stats and the more boosts that you've got to your stats the more base power that attack does turn three we are going to go for a stored power and throughout this early stage of the raid, you will see the Swamp Herd steal some of your Terror Orb power. So it means that you're going to need to attack four times to Drasslice rather than three that you would normally see. Stored power going to come out, do a little bit of damage, but more importantly, it's going to recover some of that health that we've taken from those attacking options. The Swamp Herd going to opt in for Sludge Wave still, and we're going to be able to take those pretty comfortably throughout the raid. It's going to be burnt as well. We've got pretty much the, the perfect partnering Pokemon here with the Drift Blim the Intimidate on the Taurus and the Arbolivia with that grassy terrain. We're not going to have to worry too much about the Earthquakes, but that is something that you will have to consider and take into consideration if you come to the raid with other partnering Pokemon, as we see another Sludge Wave fired out here. And it will get to the point, this is the first phase kind of over, where it sets up the shield, and then it will nullify the stat boosts on our side of the field as well as our ability. There we go, it is nullifying those now. And this is the signal for us to get into that second stage. The first thing that we're going to do, again, set up an acid armor, boosting our defense stat by two stages, making it easier for us to take those physical type attacks coming out from the Swamp Herd if it does opt for those later on in the raid. And it'll boost the power of stored power as well. And then we're going to lock in with those calm minds. And at this stage, you kind of want to keep an eye on your health because there is going to be a stage in the raid where you are going to take enough attacks where your HP is going to be pretty low. And that's the point where you want to trust lies because you're going to want to try and get some health back. But if you can squeeze in two to three calm minds early on in this raid, we're sitting pretty comfortable at this point where we're not in any danger of getting knocked out. But if you are in danger of getting knocked out, you might need to pull the trigger with that terrestrialization and go for those stored powers where you can get a little bit more health back. But at this stage, we're not in that danger yet where we can keep firing off these calm mines, getting these plus one to our special attack and special defense stat. And 
until the point where we're in danger really of getting knocked out where we're not at the moment with the health that we're recovering each turn this is our third calm mind and we're not at this stage where we can terrestrialize yet of course you might be at this stage of the raid but also three calm minds seems pretty reasonable at this stage for us to fire off that stored power and then we're going to be at the point where we can terrestrialize and then start really chipping away at the swamp herd the raid timer at this stage as well is in a pretty healthy position and you're going to get to a stage in the raid where you are going to see the swamp herd fire off a yawn um, and it can go into any one of the four pokemon on your side of the field thankfully for us this time around it doesn't hit into the vaporeon which is great um, and we are going to fire off that stored power which is going to mean that the next turn we can terrestrialize we're still in a healthy position it's not really going to be doing too much damage to us where we are going to be able to fire off that stored power and the rng dependent will make this raid pretty different every time you come into it depending on the raid partners that you've got with the vaporeon like i say it's a little bit more consistent with an eyelip why i featured it first why we went through the raid first but with three calm mines and an acid armor under our belt we're going to be doing some big damage to the swamp earth here and you can see the amount of damage that we're able to do we're going to be able to cut through this raid very quickly from this point on swamp hurt at the stage that it's at with its health and the raid timer it will nullify its stat drops on its side of the field but it hasn't really had any of a significant uh, worth at this stage other than those intimidates so um not really going to matter too much we'll lock in with another sword power and then one more after this should be enough and like i say once you get this initial part of the raid done you're going to be in a good position to break the shield and then close the raid up pretty quickly but it is a very consistent way to do it i just personally prefer the annihilate the slow bro very consistent as well but between the annihilate the vaporeon and the slow bro you're going to have three options that are all available to get in the base games and all going to be very consistent at going and beating this swamp hurt this weekend there are obviously other options that you can use legendary pokemon like me too and there's another option in Espathra. But I just feel like these ones are all available very early on in the game and all just as consistent as the other. But if you want the speediest route, I would recommend the Annihilate over this weekend. We are going to break the shield, of course. And pretty much from the raid this point out, we're going to just be spamming that stored power. Um, and you're going to have enough. You don't need to PB max it. You can if you want to be super safe, but you shouldn't need more than 10 stored powers to get through the Swamp Hurt, of course, in this raid. And with one more, we're going to be able to close this one up and reap the rewards of those Herba Mystica drops. Hopefully we do get some good ones this time around for the Swamp Hurt. And that last stored power will be enough to clean it up. And it's as easy as that with the Vaporeon. I guess you've probably got to think a little bit more with the Vaporeon as well because you've got more move options than you do with the Annihilate where it is just simply bulk up and getting the timer right of the second bulk up, third bulk up if you need it, and then a rage fisting for the rest of the battle we don't get any herba mystica drops with this one unfortunate but that is as easy as it is to take down this one put with this vaporeon so friends that is everything for today's video have a lot of fun with this seven star terror raid event for swampert when it is out for its second time after this it will be gone until the next time if they do a repeat of this in the future of course we have got those mass outbreak events for the kindly mark so good luck if you're hunting for those I hope you have a lot of luck finding the shiny if you're going for it with that kindly mark as well let me know down in the description which one you are looking forward to trying to chase down the most and also what you think the next seven star terror event will be of course we might get an announcement this sunday evening for another seven star terror event but they might leave it a week and we'll have to wait a little bit longer until the next one you've got to think it would be a fire type next hopefully it would be maybe something like embo maybe incineral we'll see or even that infernip but we want to complete that whole trio set. We need Sceptile, don't we? So that could likely be the next 7-star Terror Raid event as well. Hope you found today's video useful. Of course, if you have, do drop a like. It does really help out the channel. Helps out the video as well. Helps share it around in the community. And do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon content that we do. Thank you so much for tuning in once again, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the events over the weekend. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.